Oh my god. Acceptable. Yeah. Okay. Calm yeah. down. Your brain. Okay. All right. Welcome Ruben to. Ruben didn't even realize watching. Oh, we the started. Episode. Yeah, we oh, started the episode. That's why I said. <laughs> I just started it. Welcome to the Cross Media Show, episode 23. Uh, we're talking about Attack on Titan, episode 69. Yay. Nice. The greatest episode of them all, you know? Thumbs up. And, you know, for episode 69, this is kind of an episode that let me down. <laughs> and, you know, I never thought those words would ever say, I would ever say those words, you know? 69 just, let me down. Just wait till we get to episode 420. Oh, know? okay. All right. Cool. That'll be a good one. Okay. Um, as always for this show, I have Fiona with me. How you doing, Fee? I'm sorry. I keep calling you Fiona. How's it going? It's okay. It's going good. Hi. It's been a big week, but yeah. it's been going good. It's been a hell of a week. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's been a, yeah. <laughs> It's been a hell of a week. It's only Tuesday, but it's been a hell of a week. Um, Christian, mm -hmm. how's it going? On GB the bomb G, it's going real well. Liverpool <laughs> won today, so we're we're we're. Li <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's the perfect intro. You know, Han GB the bomb G. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. You know, mm -hmm. I'll take it. And of course, we have this guy. Gene, how's it going? Gene, Gene. How do you pronounce his name? Gene. John? 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 Yeah. John Jones? It's, it's, it's split. It is split. Because in the anime, they say John. But then, like, mm -hmm. some people also in, like, the English dub call him Gene. Gene. So, Gene. what's good happening? It's it, Okay, well, we're American-speaking. You know, we're English-speaking. <laughs> so, we're going to call you Gene. How's it going, Gene? I'm doing quite well, quite well. How about yourself, Ruben? You know... I had a really great time yesterday with Christian talking about WandaVision. Like, a really great time. It was so much fun. Like, honestly, don't tell Eric this, but, like, it was a really bad... It was a really good episode, you know? It was a really good episode. And it went from I, really bad to really good? No, I was going to say it was a really much better episode, but I can't lie to him like that. So, like, it was a really good episode, though. I was literally on point, and then I missed one. And then Just I was the one back time. on. I was back on V. It was crazy. Crazy. But anyway, we're not here to talk about WandaVision. How Damn did we, it. How did we feel about uh, episode 69? Fee? That look says it all. I know. It's more, yeah. it's more dialogue, guys. It's a lot of dialogue and a lot of back and forth between like present. Oh. No, Fee. Oh. Your mic probably got unplugged. No. Oh, the sad face. No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, she. Uh, audio listeners, she's now dead. <sighs> <laughs> We've For some weird, something really weird just happened. Did you see it? It was like her baby Yoda just got up and just. Wait, does she have, does she have a Grogu plushie that I haven't? She does, seen? she does. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, oh, we're waiting. We're waiting for her to uh, come back to life. If I'm lying, I'm dying. Yeah, I guess you're lying because uh, you're not dead yet. Uh, so did did any of us actually enjoy the episode? I mean, I thought it was fine. I enjoyed it while like I had some hummus. Okay. Some, some pita chips. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I was eating some Chex Mix, which yeah, was probably the is. best part of the episode. <laughs> so... Just you eating Chex Mix. <laughs> I mean, it was a good. It was a good batch of Chex Mix. Okay. All right. That's fair. Oh, okay. Poor feet. You get those bagel chips. Ah, oh, dude, bagel chips are the best. Yeah, it's working. Oh, Fee. Hey. There you go. Are you back? Yeah, Grogu brought it back. Sweet, we can stop uh, talking about snacks. Cool. <laughs> Just have him sitting here the entire time, looking like he's talking. Okay, that works. <laughs> That's epic. <laughs> That's what we needed. So, as you were saying, I thought it was 
an okay episode. I think that there was definitely some words were kind of it was how am I trying to put this? I there's parts that I was really excited about and thought was very good. Other parts I thought it dragged on a little bit too much. And then there was a scene that I pretty much wanted to forget because I forgot the fact that it was a bunch of men talking about a woman's body. It's thumbs up. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Ryan, did you say how, like, what you you said the best part of this episode was you eating Chuck's mix? Did you not like the episode? It, <laughs> it was, it was just mediocre. Okay. Like, don't get me wrong. I liked a lot of the episodes when we were in Molly of just people talking and explaining things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there's something that's off about this episode and I can't put my finger on it. Or it just that's how okay. Yeah, that's, like, that's how like there was oh continue. Oh no, I am gonna you can go. Oh no, I was just gonna say like there was parts when we were in Marley where I felt like they were talking a lot more and I was more engaged than mm-hmm. what was happening here. And there was like it was a very very blood heavy episode and it almost felt like episode i think it was five when it was a bunch of willie and megas talking and those guys talked a lot and i'm like i'm engaged in this episode i'm like i feel like i'm in school because they're sitting in a like a meeting room having a conversation in depth and i just was not engaged as i was and it's Compared to the manga, this is it was shortened down. Like with the actual conversation oh. leads were cut down. So like it was I felt that way when I read this portion of the manga and in the episode I was just like, this is about right. But there were definitely some parts where it was exciting, but I just felt like it was very much uneven again because they were jumping back and forth between times without too much of a clear indicator. Which kind of made it weird for me. I I had told you guys before the show, like I already forgot this episode. There were mm-hmm. some parts of this episode where I was like, "Why don't you just do this? Like, put this before the Marley Act, you know? Yeah. Like, put this in front of everything that happens in Marley, and like the the flashbacks, I guess, most likely." Just put, well, not most likely, just put all the flashbacks where they're supposed to be in the story, you know? Don't give it to us as flashbacks. I don't need to know about, you know, the them butting heads in court. Mm-hmm. Not in court, but, like, talking about, oh, what do we think that the, uh, I forgot what this lady was. The lady that bumped into, ah, what the hell is this guy's name? I think I wrote her name down somewhere. Kiyomi? Yeah, but like, what's their last name? The uh, something Azumabio. I like it's uh, um yeah it's Azumabio, which was a group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The those people. I feel like them meeting should have been in. It just should have been like one of the first episodes, instead of us I... having all the Marley stuff. Wait, I I can see that but at the same time if they did it that way they may as well just have like a like a like either like a small seas where it was just like what they were doing in between the time jump yeah but mm-hmm. i felt like it was kind of cool to see her like at this point because you're like oh, oh it's that now lady. i get why she was yeah, being yeah, yeah. for like supportive of the eldians yeah. and then her being like oh we're leaving now because she knew what was up like she definitely had a clear indicator like i know what's what's about to happen and i'm leaving so that's pretty much like i like, understand why she left before the events happened because she, she knew she's like I'm... Mm-hmm. I knew that information. I wouldn't have stayed that long. I would have been like already gone. I would have been like, oh, I'd be having a green, and then and, like the day before. <laughs> That's just me. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. Also, she wanted to intimidate. Yeah. Um, but like, there was some cool stuff that we found out. We found out about um, 
Mikasa? Is that yeah, Mikasa. Yeah, Mikasa. We found was, that, was that the first time we've ever seen that mark, by the way? I don't remember seeing that before. Yeah, I have, I I think, I'm pretty yeah. sure that's the first time we ever saw it. But that just felt um, like a little cheap to me. Like, so, uh, the issue was, with the first three seasons, they did not animate the bandage on her wrist. In the manga, you saw the bandage on her wrist the entire time. Kind of oh, frame okay. and they forgot to like draw it but i'm gonna be honest it's bullshit okay oh i'm kidding you're gonna be oh god damn it again oh, damn yeah i can't hear you which is a bummer though like she was like making some really good points <laughs> yeah, too. <it> did. <laughs> man it's just like been cursed yeah it's just god damn it episode 69 you know, I, I will say while she while she fixes it that they they point to like her bandage being covered the whole time, and I was like, yeah, I don't remember ever seeing a bandage on her. Which Never yeah, was remember like, seeing that. Yeah, was no, there? no, I don't think it was there, but in the manga it was there. So yeah. I think for the this the studio change and everything, a. Mm -hmm. More attention to detail following the manga script for script type stuff. Yeah. Well, I, w I will say that, like, having another flashback, like, back to back, kind of hurt the pacing for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Especially when they didn't really give you context that this was a flashback. Sorry, it was right. a flashback. So I, I was kind of confused, but yeah, continue. Sorry. No, I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, my apologies. I'm so sorry. Damn. Um, wow. We, do we want to just like save this for next episode? We we could. Uh, I don't know. I feel like Fiona has like some interesting stuff because there was like a lot of lore that was being dumped on dumped on us that like. Okay. Oh, I remember my train of thought. I remember my train of thought now. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so, so the pacing kind of hurt for me. Um. And so I was talking about this in, in one of the like anime groups. Oh, she's back. Okay. Um, real quick, let me finish my thought and then uh, back to Fee. Um, and so the, the whole like reason of thought that I was getting back, I was like, oh, don't worry. This is like building up something, building up something. And I feel like I've been getting that for most of the show now. Yeah. And like I'm, I'm ready for some kind of resolution. Uh, I'm like I'm ready to see some kind of build up, which I'm, I'm just not getting yet. And so uh, this show has had no payoff whatsoever. Damn, yes, I... Fiona, you're back. No, you just had it. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> do you want to just save this? <laughs> we do a, a combination episode next week of episode 69 and episode 70. How's that sound for you? I mean... Oh. I'm back. Okay. Apparently. Okay. Um... Uh, no, it, we can like I'm okay continuing, um, but I understand if we wanted to do a combination episode. Okay, uh, so let's let's continue. If it happens again, we'll just save it. How about that? Okay. Okay. How about it? That works. Yeah, but no, Wit just didn't like animate the band. Yeah, the entire that image. Time. Oh my god. No. <laughs> yeah, they just didn't. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Continue. What? Something freeze? Like, what happened? No, no, no. I changed the image for Ryan by accident. Oh. <laughs> so it's Sonic. <laughs> and you know what? We're going to keep it. Oh, dear God. Um. Yeah, no. So Wit just didn't animate it. And so a lot of people were like, why? This kind of seems like weird that they just automatically like just brought this bandage that wasn't brought in for three seasons. It was mm. there. They just Wit didn't want to put it in the animation, which was a little bit irritating, yeah. <laughs> especially when you like saw it in the manga. And then people are now like, this doesn't make any sense. It's like it does. <laughs> I thought it was. I mean, cause... they are definitely keeping. Keeping what? It happened again. <laughs> it happened again. Is it? I think she's just not talking. I'm talking. Oh. I'm letting mm -hmm. you guys talk. Oh, oh, oh. You just stopped mid sentence. 
Okay. Well, yeah, because you guys were talking. My apologies. My apologies. Uh, I just wanted to say it was. No worries. It, it, it felt a little cheap, but it was nice to see, like something happen, to Mika, uh, Mikasa, and I was just kind of excited for that. I guess. Yeah, man. I mean, she's a cool character. She deserves like. Yeah, but like the only thing we've ever seen happen to her is just like her family dying and her being rescued by Aaron. So like, I, yeah, if, I thought if you were gonna do something with that character, you might as well have done it. Second season, maybe you know. Listen, it's about time yeah. she's her own person. That's what I'm Correct. saying. I just, I just think I, yeah. I would have hoped that it happened sooner than. Oh later. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I this episode was definitely a turning point for her because you can see where like everyone else is now just like completely detached themselves from Aaron. Like Connie is already done. Like the second he laughed at Sasha dying, he's gone. Jean gone. And then Armin has been on the fence and then now we see Mikasa like just those like connections to him are slowly like breaking down. Yeah. It's not completely gone obviously, but it definitely it was a turning point in this episode mm-hmm. and i think that was a great indicator as well saying like she actually has this past and this is where her like actual like alliance in a way reside because she's like related um to them and it kind of hurdle like stops them from being able to like one take Aaron's titan power but i digress um it's definitely like it was a good turning point that way and i think her storyline in this episode improved because it made me very concerned that she's just like eh, like constantly and yeah. then now we see her like be like oh you know what yeah this isn't great not great at all i i will say in addition to that i thought it was great because it kind of like addressed some of my concerns that i had last episode and that aaron which was a big surprise to me was the one that was like, how about we try like solving this issue another way that's not the rumbling? And granted, they, they can't like there's nothing else that's gonna solve their issue, but like at least Aaron like attempted that. Yeah. Um I think the yeah. best part of this episode was them trying to figure out like who's gonna take the Titan from Aaron. And oh yeah. That uh, yeah. That was the only thing that felt like good about this episode you know everything else was kind of forgetful uh wait go ahead no like them building the railroad was cool that's how aaron gets ripped right on his john henry shit (laughs) apparently so (laughs) thank you ryan (laughs) i thought it was funny you guys know Uh, who john henry is i do not (laughs) Yeah, the guy that built the railroad really fast, faster than the machine. You know? No. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I've never heard Ruben, of him. Ruben, you're American and you don't know this story? Yeah. I, no, why Why would I need to know this story? I feel like it's, this is a, like a song. I like, feel like it is it's also a folk song. We're okay, heading you... off yeah. topic. It's important, though. Okay, okay. <laughs> How, continue that. <laughs> Continue. How how about the episode of How I Met Your Mother where Marshall versus the machine? Yeah, I remember that. You're familiar with that one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course so I am. He, because... was, he was trying to be like John Henry. Okay. Okay. He beat the machine by building a railroad really fast. Okay. Interesting. Move us on, Ruben. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just get into it, Fiona. Let's start off. Okay. Well, summer. let's we start this episode once again because apparently this is now the theme and the aesthetic of the season. We are in a dimly lit candle lit room in a room that has no windows and we find out that it is Aaron Cell. He has spent the entire week staring at his mirror um, with a sink full of water with his new man bun and without a shirt on. Just that I had to add that. Um, he's repeating what he was saying at the end of the last episode and saying fight and then saying fight again with more grandiose, uh, but then is quickly interrupted by Hanji finding him once again in a cell talking to himself, 
kind of repeating what happened in season three um, in the second portion where she finds him talking to himself after he saw all those flashbacks of Mm -hmm. Gresha and his family and his connections. And she's just like, what are you doing? (laughs) Which I feel like I would be the same way. (laughs) Just saying like, okay, you're, you're staring in a mirror talking to yourself like that's the upgrade is you now have an apex and talking into a mirror um congratulations um and she's just make like they're making fun of him just saying like fight fight like who just stands around and says that like what are you fighting why are you saying this <laughs> who's there like why are you saying fight twice is there two fights happening like what's going on here and then Hanji lets him know <laughs> that it's not helping to stay quiet and that it isn't normal for people to just talk to themselves that way. I mean, it's fact. Yeah, that's very true. And usually people would get embarrassed, but not Aaron. Um, he, Aaron just continues to stare at the mirror, gripping onto the, st- the sink throughout the conversation as if she's not there. And Hanji tries to break the tension by saying, like, your hair is really cool, especially when it's disheveled. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you're kind of hardworking and carefree <laughs> um but she also goes like this <laughs> which made me laugh a lot i was like yeah i would probably do the same thing and then aaron just snaps and asks why they're there um hanji lets them know that um they're just there to talk and it's the first time that we met we spent the entire night talking about titans and now it's changed um Mm. and it's kind of a sad reference to the fact that that's what happened in the first season where hanji and aaron first meet they have a sit-down conversation about titans the entire night it's mostly hanji talking about titans and how much they love them but it was very much like this is where the relationship went from like a carefree conversation about titans to now aaron's locked in a cell and hanji on the outside as the commander saying like wtf what are you doing yeah um and hanji just continues to try to be like upbeat which is a little bit upsetting um and trying to be themselves and saying like it wasn't it like an interesting time because that would be a time where you wouldn't have tried to sacrifice historia um and hoping that that's the continued case um but then aaron continues to glare on the mirror and then that's when the opening happens do 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 yeah opening fantastic thumbs up double thumbs up and we get to two years later it's one year after we first met niccolo and the volunteers and now it's a year later we find out that the pier has been completed, which is fantastic, and that Yelena is super happy to have um, have the opportunity to meet Aaron himself, Aaron Yeager, um, the young scout, is <laughs> standing with other scouts, including Mikasa, Hanji, and we have Levi himself <laughs> with his hand out. To- <laughs> I'm sorry, the hand. Uh, his hand is so tiny. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! I even have a. Sc- I honest, I took a screenshot because I spent a good five minutes just looking at this with him standing in front of just like Mikasa, Hanji, um, <laughs> Aaron, Connie, and a name. bunch of other of the commanders. Um, yeah, he's in the back somewhere, but he's just like, <laughs> oh dear god. Once well, the cl- the I closer shot the shots situation. were funny too, because like they have like the main characters, and then like <laughs> you just notice that like Levi is like from the torso up, you know? Yeah. I, I don't, yeah. Yeah. He's just he's so tiny, it's adorable. But yeah, he said that they will not be working together, and that he's lucky to have even um, they're lucky to have just seen his face, um, because at this point they're still on very awkward. terms terms at least with levi um a number of the other um groups seem to be a little bit more buddy buddy with the marlians but levi is still very hesitant about all this and lena says that it's a joyous day to have met erin okay like she definitely has like a jaeger like kick like she's very much like i love zeke and now i love erin yay Mm. thumbs up (laughs) um 
And then they find out that they're there at the pier because they're going to be meeting their new ally um, from the nation of Hizuru, um, Kiyomi Azumabio, who we find out later on is related to Mikasa. Um, she's introduced um, in episode four, though. We saw her at the party that Willie was hosting and Udo spilled the drink on her. Um, and then she took the fault for it and then they left. We find out, um, we'd had a little bit of a discussion about this at the beginning of the episode though, um, where this is now we get to see her side and how she got into this particular situation. Um, we cut to the meeting hall and, um, Zamabio is talking to Aaron Mikasa and the others and brought a black cloth with a, sword um it has a a symbol with three swords um at the base of the hilt making a triangle that looks like an apple app apparently oh Uh, i i don't know which one it is um because i don't have apple but it's like a blue circle with um three swords um but yeah apparently looks like an apple icon um but then she asks mikasa if she recognizes the crest um and then mikasa shows the tattoo on her wrist and we find out that her mother before she died um branded her and in episode um, in the first season that's actually a clip that we saw was um mikasa sitting at the table with her mother and then her mother branding her because that's the family breast um her mother is associated with the um i'm I definitely apologize if i'm pronouncing this incorrectly but, but the as Azumabio? Azumabio. Yes, Azumabio's family. Thank you. Um she's that like that's her family, and then her father was an Ackerman, and that's how they're related. That's why Levi is not one of the um is not associated with the royal family. Okay, because that's it was on her mother's side. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I thought I'd answer it because I was confused too until someone cleared that up for me. Um, Kenny is yeah, royalty. That... Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny is <the> royalty. <laughs> Swinging around. Oh, God. Oh, oh, Kenny. We miss Kenny. Maybe we'll get to see more Kenny. We only saw him a little bit this season. We'll but see. I digress. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so we find out that just like um what happened with marley um and that um they left a button up um, a number of eldians in marley including willie's family the tiber family um the <laughs> azumabio family left um a royal family member in parody on accident mm-hmm. after the great titan war great job um so nice. they had been f- friends with the Eldians for a substantial amount of time um and she kind of goes over the fact that like over a century ago the shoguns of the Az- Azumabio um descended um had a son he was on friendly terms with King Fritz and often came to parody after the great war um Hizuru was defeated and in disarray and in confusion they left the child of the shogun um on parody island there seemed to be a lot of confusion after that war because like the tiber family was left in Eldia, <laughs> and then they had like a bunch of eldians left in marley and then now we have a bunch of people in parody and then the confusion there so it seemed to be like a bunch of what's happening moments but i digress i, I gotta be um, honest when this is happening like when, when i was first watching it on sunday yeah i i felt really dumb i was like this is all going over my head and so i, re- I rewinded i had to rewatch and like straighten it out in my head could be worse you could have forgotten the whole show i yeah. had to do the thing <laughs> oh, I I remember. oh my god fight fight yeah uh, fight th- fight i yeah. thought you so, were gonna say all mm-hmm. you remember was Chex mix that would have been much better i definitely had to take a screenshot of this particular scene, which was the artwork of the Shogun um, meeting 
um, King oh, Fritz yeah. because I thought that that would help me remember this scene a little bit better because I agree as well. There was just so much that was introduced at one point and it was just a lot. Mm. So I took screenshots because I'm like, this will help me have a visual of what I saw at that particular time. So yeah, we find out that she's actually a long lost Disney princess and she is the hope of Isaru. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. I mean, I'm not wrong. Because Mikasa is absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah. We then cut to a, a bunch of representatives of the military um, in the hallway talking. And the fact that they don't really trust anything that's happening at this time. Once again, they're still hesitant. It's, taken the, it's been a year, but they're still very much on the fence. And they do not trust um, Yelena. Because one of them specifically says, like, we we'll need to trust Yelena on this because Yelena has more experience with um, the people of Hizaru. But then another guy said instantaneously afterwards, like, no, we cannot trust them. Like we can't do that. Um, but then we have Pixis chiming in that um, the sea has joined, um, the sea has joined us into the world and we are just children learning how to walk. So they need to remember the fact that yes, they are a strong, proud people, but they need to, realize that they need allies they need mm-hmm. allies to mm-hmm. be able to continue especially in the on with the world stage they need people on their side but it's definitely not dawned on a bunch of other people but i digress <laughs> that's my short rambling about that particular scene um and then the door is open and we see historia confronting mikasa um, asking why she um, only showed the symbol to Aaron, um, probably angry because there was a secret that she didn't know about, um, and that she seemed super happy. And Aaron asked her, like, why are you super happy about all this? And she said, I now know that we were both born <laughs> with a heavy burden to bear. I mean, I get it. Um, if you are going through a difficult time, it's nice to know that she now has a friend who understands that oh, this is what happens when you have a bunch of responsibility left to you from your family. But I, I have to reiterate here that like the fact that like they made a, a, a moment to to say that like, oh, like she showed it to Aaron. Why why were we not shown this like more like, I, I don't know. We, we already talked to death about it, but like, I really feel like we, we should have like another moment here. Or in the show. Can anyone hear? Say. Sorry. What? Yeah, sorry. My mic was off. Um, okay. I feel like if at any point you were going to show this, Mark, you should have shown it that first episode where he rescues me, uh, Mikasa. Mm. Have her, like, you know, do a little flash of, oh, shit, my arm, you know, like, don't, don't look because it's, you know, something yeah. like that. But nothing. So I didn't like this at all. Like, if you were going to do something about it, you could have been like, uh, well, there's nothing. I guess you could have kept the last name, but I don't know. That's just me. Yeah. Like, I think it would have helped if Wit animated that particular image because I know there was, like, for example, there was the key that Aaron had. So that was a secret. And then... We had we've had other reveals like Ymir. We find out that Ymir had the Jaws Titan in season two, and we have all these um, like reveals. And I think if we had that visual throughout the series, I think that would have definitely helped kind of the build up to find out like, oh, this is why she's had a bandage on her wrist for four seasons. Yeah. Whereas this, this is the first time you've seen this animated. Let me reveal it. Like that seemed a little bit irritating, um, because. I, especially with something with such a large plot point, I think they missed an opportunity to animate it because I think that's something mm-hmm. that people needed to see rather than be like, oh, here's a plot twist that no one knew about. Ta-da! Like, yeah, yeah. It was a missed opportunity. It was. I very much agree with that. It's just a shame. Yeah. That's me being a little bit irritated at wit. I'm sorry, but. No, that's okay. You had it, it was needed. Someone it was had to definitely do it. needed. Someone just had to, was feeling a little bit spicy today. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, I I appreciate the fact that um, Mappa did. Like, I know with the uniforms that they had, they didn't show the wrists, so you couldn't see them with the new, mm. like, attire. Um, and then this was the first time that we kind of saw her this season close up with her wrists showing. Because the rest of the time, she always has, like, at least some sort of coverage. Um, but there have been opportunities where she just didn't have, like, when they were on the beach, they didn't have yeah. any wrappings on her arm. Nope. Like, no one would have known that unless she had, like... Some, but they literally don't have medication. So why are you making makeup over like? No one, no one asks like, "Yo, what's up with that bandage you never take off?" Yeah, that's something too. But I think they probably would have removed that. Like, I don't know if they actually mentioned it during the first, like, in the manga, because it's been like forever since I read that portion of the manga. But it's just been a visual, so I don't mm. think anyone like made too much. No, it was just a part of Mikasa. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just because you would assume that Sasha would have called her out on it Absolutely. at some point. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. Sasha's one of those people. Literally asked someone why they were black. Like, she would have asked <laughs> her why she had been. Oh, she did. I, al- I almost forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget. Oh, my God. Oh, Sasha, we love her. Um, But yeah. Um, we did get to see this was a monumental moment, guys. This was the first time in 10 episodes in this season that we saw Aaron smile. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't also notice that, <laughs> which was like, damn, bro. You know, I guess this yeah. is, was, he was just happy. Yeah, exactly. And then everybody gets all blushy for when they're talking about who's taking over for yeah. him. Oh, mm-hmm. That's so exciting. I love that scene. Yeah. Exciting. That, was he, he, that was a sweet scene. I didn't mm-hmm. see that as exciting at all. I was like, oh, fuck. Like, we can't just have a moment, you know? Why does everything have to be back to... Like, I get that they're in... You know what I'm saying? But like, why can't they just be kids? You know? Does that make sense? Am I wrong? I mean, at this point, they're like, if it's two years ago, they would be 17. So this is definitely a... This is how 17-year-olds act. They get all blushy. They get all cute. They're like, we're up against the world. Everything is great. Like yeah. you. Yeah, I just. And then them nineteen is day. around the time where you're like, fuck. I just wanted them. To have <laughs> they said everything was gonna be great after school, and then this shit happens. Like. <laughs> I just. I've been like that them. most of my life. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I just wanted them to have like one day where they didn't have to worry about this shit. You know. Just I mean, focus on yeah. That. Have a good time in the sun. But he did seem. Yeah, yeah he did seem happy. He did seem... I mean, yeah, the same but, man but... Who it's unpaid labor. Who couldn't handle yeah. what? Aaron is the same guy who just couldn't go to the beach and be happy. I don't think this group mm-hmm. knows when the right moment to be happy is. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No. You're right. Man, I even, for the next scene, and I think Ruben's going to really like it. We are now in the room where it happened. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh! Um, three representatives from Hizuru, seven parody um, military representatives, and the queen sitting at the head of the table discuss what Zeke's plan is. Mm. Um, Kiyomi begins at that this is a historic day, and that this is them joining ha- forces to go up against the world. But then we find out that they have an ulterior motive, which is they like money. And this is essentially what they're looking at (laughs) is essentially a transactional option, not so much a friendship. Um, And they kind of um, talk about it later on, um, especially with the kind of, (laughs) it's a flashback within a flashback where Kiyomi is talking to Z. And he shows her the ODM gear, talking about the fact that this is what the people of Parody use um, as anti-Titan weaponry, and that they use a special stone called Ice Burst Stone. And that's how they power all of their gear. Am I wrong? Um, this and first... this kind of really seals... Sorry. What's up? Am I wrong? Is this the first time that they've mentioned this, too? No. This is the... A... 
No? Okay. No. The, they, they usually crystals? mention it in intermissions. Wow. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Yeah, and there's little things where it's like what the tools are and everything. Yeah, it yeah, will yeah. say that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And isn't that what the big crystal room is made of, where they kept Aaron, where they would eat people, was made of that same crystal they mined? Yeah, mm-hmm. but like nobody yeah. mentions it by name, you know. Yeah, like, but I mean, they don't have time to animate them refilling the ODM gear. No, not even refilling <laughs> it, but like, th- there's been multiple scenes where like, oh shit, I'm out of juice. Yeah, yeah, then they still oh, get the, the tanks. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, p- pass me. Uh, what's the mineral called? Ice something. Ice gem. What? what, what oh, it? it's called ice burst stone. I. Uh, oh, pass me an ice burst canister. You know, like literally like anything. Or a white claw. Yeah, but like, okay. I, I guess I'm just like reading too much into. No, it. no, I, I'm well, with they, you. I'm with they, you, Ruben. Okay, good. They specifically make, like, obviously, I'm not an engineer. I don't know this. But, uh, like, they specifically take the ice burst stone. They do something, make it into a fuel, and then th- that's how they power their gear. And that's why they say, give me a canister. Or, like, I need more fuel. Yeah, that's but, like. what I specifically know. I guess I'm wondering, like, why didn't they just, like, throw that in there in one episode? The name of the, like, what's the, 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 the ice burst stone, you know? Like, am I, mean, I no, 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 Ruben. I think I think with like a lot of voiceover that was happening in the first season, if that was mentioned as part of it, like during like the training, that would have been cool. Yeah, um, just like something yeah. like that, you know. But I get you. Okay, cool. I'm sorry. I just continue. That makes me think of something, but I'll leave that for right. another time. Oh, so okay. he, he um tells us that this is a unique um, underground resource um, only found in parody and traces of it should be found in the weapon so she can have access to it to be able to do any sort of tracing because obviously they are light years ahead of um, parody when it comes to technology of some sort um, yeah so we find out that Zeke Jaeger said that if we um, if they coordinated with him um, that their nation may just be the Hellman industry that will um, assist them to get to their former glory. So I think this was pretty much them kind of solidifying the fact that this is very much a transactional deal mm-hmm. with um, Zero, and it's not the, like thinking putting it's not putting parody like it's once again putting ba- um, parody as some sort of like here's an item and this is how we're going to benefit from this item and it's not what they want to do um but she tries to seem interested and at one point oh yeah i put this in my notes kiyomi mentioned the fact that the resources that they have um especially in modernization of the world that it's um, that the price of it would be substantial and then she licks her lip so that really makes it very clear (laughs) that she's like very money hungry and i did not like this and i put that in brackets i did not like that because you could tell that it would have like a slurping noise and i don't want it Ugh. a slurping noise. Ugh. I <laughs> as a fan of asmr i didn't mind it but it was a, it was a bit strange <laughs> it was a bit strange it was, it was strange they did not need to but yeah this. we have a bunch of people having inner monologues the people of parody talking like realizing that yelena was right um, because they're money grubbers um, is what <laughs> Mikasa was thinking and that it kind of goes back and forth between her um, and Hanji about the situation and kind of assessing what their actual priorities are um, and then Pixis adding mentally that it's not worth the risk coming here unless money is involved. Shocker. Um, so once again they kind of talk about um, continue talking and that there's three parts of Zeke's plan. One, that they test the rumbling to release a sample of its power and show its devastation. Um, and then I put Q Team Rocket because it sounded like the world of devastation. And <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Right? That's, exactly, <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I got. The evil <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. And then the history corporation, their military must be strengthened until um, the use of the rumbling isn't necessary. And then three, the founding titan 
and a titan of royal blood must be passed down. Zeke will pass mm-hmm. the beast titan to someone of royal blood, and that they are required to have as many children as they can in that 13 period lifetime. Real gross. I don't like it. What, to gross. breed? Yeah, to breed it's for 13 great. years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, yeah, it definitely made me feel comfortable. And I remember when I read this, it also made me feel very uncomfortable because now it's gone from like, we're just up against Titans to let's make Doria a breed farm. Like, it's so gross. Some queen oh. bee stuff. Yeah. Oh, uh, God. And yeah, everyone, like, the elderly at the table are in shock and disgusted. Um, shocker. Um, no one likes this idea. Um, and that um, Hanji also makes a mental note that even with weaponry advances, like this could be their only option. Like you can tell that the Eldians are trying to think of an, like a different plan other than the rumbling, mm-hmm. but it's definitely the strongest tool that they have at this point. Um, but Aaron is not about using her as a breeding farm <laughs> and that it's Cause... his story is like, what what's up no it's it's because it's gross yeah it's hella gross it's not great it's not great at all i'm not okay with this at all um Mm -hmm. (laughs) i don't like it um i did think that it was quite interesting that the clip that they used um and then um they showed Historia being chained up in the basement that we saw in season three um, when they were talking about, unless we get rid of it, inheriting Titans will continue to generations to come. And this is what Hanji is thinking is thinking of Historia being chained up in the basement that they saw. And then a Titan that looks like Pixis, but with no mustache consumes her. <laughs> like if you look at the Titan, it literally looks like his face and he just consumes Historia. And then that's the end of the, like, what she's thinking about probably because they're looking at him at this time but it seemed pretty interesting to me um but yeah mm. oh, god uh, yeah. uh yeah after years of getting trampled on now we got to breed like livestock isn't that if that's the price of zeke Yeager, um he can take his damn plan and shove it aaron says to everyone angrily yeah, i don't it. like the scene shove it okay just shove it shove it but yeah yeah, the, the scene was not great. Historia is not happy about it. She's also tearing up, um, but she says that she would do it anyway because she wants to put the people of parody before her own happiness. Like, where does she Which is really get upsetting off, because, you know? like... Who does she think she is? What do you mean? Like, trying to be... Does she put sort of the happiness, like, the... Yeah, like, happiness? no, I don't want you putting your happiness in, uh, ahead of the people, like... Don't don't do this. This is not a good idea. Mm. Well, see, the thing is, like, if she did that, that's her. Ha- like, she wouldn't be happy. Like, she wouldn't be happy about it. But she wants to put parody before her own happiness, and so she realizes that, like, if this is what we need to do for us to be respected, then this is what I'm going to have to do. But then Aaron's like, "Hell to the no! You're not going to be able to. Like, you're not doing that." And it's upsetting because you see her like super happy and giddy in the um, hallway and talking to Mikasa being super like like excited about the situation and being like everything's gonna be fine to I now have to become a breeding farm and have the founding titan that destroyed my family um no she would get the she would get the no she would get the beast titan from Zeke yeah I don't like it I don't like it either. I don't like it at all. If you think that's gross, just wait till the scene where they're all at the table talking about her body. Mm, I don't like it. But yeah, before we get to that scene, we, we, like, usually, like, when I take notes, I'm usually very thorough. Shocker. I know. Um, But that scene, I was very liberal in my notes, which was essentially, like, this is what happened. We got to see Niccolo. Let's move on. <laughs> like, um, but no, we get to see Hanji and Aaron talking in the basement again. So we jump back to present time. And 
Hanji asks him, like, don't you care about Historia? Like, him acting out is not okay. Um, but then Aaron replies that he ate the hammer, um, the Warhammer Titan. And I put, cool story, bro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it has a, pow- uh, a power of hardening through the ground and make what I'm make whatever i want in other words i can leave whenever the hell i want to um and flexing that to hanji um and that she all um, that he also has the founding titan so he can't be killed and that um you can't kill zeke either um even if he was a threat to you because you need to have zeke so at this point he thinks that he has all the cards and he like he has all the cards and hanji has none so trying to put that over their head. Um, and then he picks Hanji off the floor. I was not happy with this. Mm. And asks them, like, what do you want to do? Like, this is the only plan that we have. Do you have any other better ideas? And then starts screaming at Hanji to tell them, like him, these ideas that Hanji has. Um, and tells, just being an idiot. Um, Hanji then pulls themselves away saying calling Aaron a perv and that are you still in the rebellion phrase you moron idiot and then storms out of the room Um, and then the saddest part ever was Hanji closing the door behind them and sliding down the door and saying Erwin you made one mistake in your life why did you make me commander and Mm. then that was the end of that scene I really like Hanji he's just trying to do their best I, I like that because that was like the only time that like I think well, the first time that I remember that like Hanji is like con- like confronting um, like the pressures that like a commander faces, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's which is nice to see. Yeah, it just makes me sad because. They, like, even though everyone knows it's Aaron's fault, like, Aaron acting out and everything, it's on Aaron, but Hanji's still taking responsibility for everything. Exactly. And saying, like, which makes him a good commander. It's bullshit is what it is, okay? Nobody talks, Mm. nobody makes Hanji feel like that, okay? She's the bomb, G. I won't allow it. Yeah. Um... Now we, we cut to parody in the morning and we see Historia on a patio on a farm and she is very, very, very pregnant um, and a man comes and tells her to come inside um, and that's pretty much the end of that scene. So we now find <laughs> out that Historia is pregnant. She is very upset um, because she does not look like she wants to be anywhere but there. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's not a great scene. Uh, I, I, I do have to ask for something for clarification here, though. Yeah. Like, I, I, can't, I can't remember. So she had, like, a, like this, like, love affair with, like, uh, a servant? Was it, was it a servant or, like, some kind of, like, I don't know. A farmer. A farmer, okay. Okay. Yeah. Which was also it kind was, of weird to uh, me. Sorry. That was super odd to me. Am I, am I the only person that thought that? How, how so? Just because, like, the way that they introduced that guy, he was throwing rocks at her, trying to get her attention, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Which is like, mm-hmm. what? Who throws rocks to get her attention? It well, looked... I think it's kind of a Japanese thing, isn't it? Uh, probably. Okay, okay, then never yeah. mind. Because it looked like they were, like, yeah. bullying her, you know? Like, oh, we're, we're watching her do all the handiwork on the farm. Well, it's... It's like picking, like it's picking on someone that you like, and, mm-hmm. and so he threw, he was throwing rocks at her, and then he felt bad about it, and then stood outside her orphanage when she was a kid, and then they met up later on. She has a love affair. They do it. They have like she's now pregnant. Um, so when the beast titan throws rocks at you, it's because he likes you. <laughs> Just- <laughs> Yeah, I no, knew was, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can feel the tension between him and Levi. You know oh, it. You uh, know I've, I've been is... saying it for a while now, and sooner or later we're just yeah. gonna have a scene of just them walking out of the same room, like disheveled and <laughs> their clothes to that guy. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Do we think there's fan fiction, by the way, of them two together? Oh, oh 1,000%. Will, will we read some? TBD. You yeah, know. you know what? It's going to be the cross media, like after hours. After hours, yeah. fanfic edition. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, we then Hello. we then get to a scene that we're not going to go really much into, um, because mm. it's a bunch of men talking about females reproduction and that they like one of the guys wants to endanger Historia by making her tighten anyway. You know what? You don't get to have the justification of us talking about it. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's pretty much all we're going to talk about there. Um, Und- underneath, though, in the basement, in the yes. cellar, the wine cellar, yes. are yes. the Marlins up to something with that bottle of wine? Because it, like, the music was a bit like, "Is it this bottle of wine you're looking for?" And I was like, "Oh, is it? Are they going to poison the dude for being an asshole, or am I, I just reading too much?" I also thought scene? that. I, okay. I don't think it was just you. I also thought that, which is weird. I could just be me, but I so think, moving on, yeah. we saw Niccolo. <laughs> fair, fair. We saw Niccolo with some very ominous music and saying, "Is this the bottle?" <laughs> so um, that's that. Um, we then cut back to two years ago, um, and we find out that Parody is finally getting an upgrade, and they're getting a train. And who is working on the train track? John Henry. It's <laughs> John Henry. Um, <laughs> so close. We have Mikasa, Connie, Jean, Aaron, Armin, and Sasha all son. And the very first scene that we see is Connie and Jean talking about like who signed us up for this stupid job. Hmm. And they both say, like, it's obviously moron over here. Um, and then we point to Aaron, which then as I said be- at the very beginning, I think, and before the podcast, the best arc ever happens where it is Sasha in the background with a pail of water. Armin tries to stop <laughs> Sasha from drinking said water because it's their only source of water. She then dunks her head in it and then runs around. And we continue to have this conversation <laughs> between Connie, Jean, Aaron, and then <laughs> them talking about how they're stuck there in the uh, like sun so they can improve their bodies um <laughs> yeah but then we also see mikasa being a boss and carrying a bunch of like steel like strips on her shoulder as if it was nothing and she's just walking through the scene um which is absolutely fantastic some badass shit dude i want to yeah. build a railroad so bad what's stopping you <sighs> she's uh, a pandemic I think maybe one. I mean, it's, if it's just you, why? How's that stopping you? Snow, it's snowy outside. Uh, I'm a little tired. Yeah. Uh, I feel like you're just making excuses for yourself, but okay. I'm sorry. That's uh, okay. Um. Yeah. So they are wait. They are waiting to hear back from the nation of Hizuru to see what's happening. Because at this point, there's no confirmed um, agreement. So they're just seeing if it's going to actually happen or not. Um, we then get to see the end of the water um, arc, which is Sasha, who drank all of the water, and Armin looking at the pail very upset because there is no water left. And they are in the middle of pretty much like a like a heat wave, probably. in the There's no shade in sight. Um, so once again, Sasha pulling a Sasha. Um, good lord. Um, <laughs> well, um, Hanji and Levi that the, the nation of his crew aren't actually going to help them, and that it was all for money in the first place, and that they're essentially scared of uh, the world is scared of what they don't know, and so they mm-hmm. just um see them as devils, and that they can group together and the nations can unite to go up against one enemy which is parody so it's not great for the people of parody it's great for everyone else because then they can put the world's problems on one island which is already the case um during this conversation also a great levi moment is when levi looks at connie and says unbelievable 
<laughs> you're all growing so damn big as Connie is just towering over Levi and he is the shortest man in this conversation. <laughs> Five foot nothing, am I right? Five foot nothing. It's it's the way he's looking um, up that's I yeah. think really funny. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said online that he's a five foot two man with a six foot personality because that's essentially how he acts. He just <laughs> thinks he's a lot bigger than he is, that's which exactly I understand is a Napoleon complex, but yeah. Mm. He, what, what that long do you? Sorry, what, Ruben? No, I was just going to say, I don't think it's a Napoleon <laughs> complex per se. I just think that, like, like, he talks the talk, but he also walks the walk, if that makes sense. Like he is the man yes. that, yeah, th that you need to rely on when shit goes south. He will fi get you out of any situation. So, like, by all means, have a six foot, you know, like have a six foot. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not attitude, but like personality, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. Sorry. We no, all, we why all knew. No, because we this all knew this. We we, we all know this. You know, we've all watched uh, all the episodes. We know that Levi's a badass. I mean, yeah, that is very true. Yeah. Whoa, he's a like, Virgo. The more you know. Sorry, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> it makes sense. Look at his... <laughs> he's very much a Virgo. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, I um, the entire I felt really bad because like you can feel that like are still grasping on to like optimism and the fact like well why can't we just like show them that we're peaceful? Like why can't we do like put in the work and show them that we're better than this? And the others kind of seem a little bit like this is probably not going to happen. They're losing hope essentially. Um but they do um kind of continue on um oh God, i just feel really bad they just like they try to improve and they try to improve and yet there's still just a small island that is considered like demon infested well devil mm -hmm. infested my apologies and they just can't do anything to fix it um and i would also like i would just feel like kind of defeated at that point because their only hope at mediation with the world which was the Hizuru nation now has just turned their back on them because of money. I mean, you understand why Aaron's pretty fatalist. You know? True. Also, I mean, mm -hmm. like, I the only thing that they, like, pretty much said they want to do is use Historia as a breed farm. And then, mm -hmm. apparently, mm -hmm. that just de everything. Because I think they're also trying to think of ways other than using rumbling. Because the rumbling is, like, I don't think there's a test for rumbling. Like, we're just going to set off just a small portion off. Like, you can't really do that. <laughs> they also don't know how it works or, like, how they can control it. So I think there's a lot more that they need to do. Um, but, yeah. But we also it's don't a, know how uh, it works. It's not. I don't think so. Okay. Because st they keep talking about the rumbling. At this app, point, we do not know how it works. And I still don't know what it is. Is this something that only the Beast Titan could do? We'll never know. The The only explanation that they've <laughs> given in the anime was that King Fritz made the walls out of Titans and said that if the people of the world came after parody, it would set the Titans off in the wall and then that rumbling would happen. That's essentially the only explanation that they've provided us in the anime so far. My question is, like, what's the difference between the Titans in the walls than the Titans that are outside? A lot bigger, right? They're colossal Titans. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because it didn't look like it <laughs> <laughs> when they first showed it in the show. It didn't look like they were colossal. It's yeah. Just like, okay. All right. Yeah. Never mind. Continue. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. They are thousands of like hundreds of thousands of colossal titans standing shoulder to shoulder in three like areas there's like the outside ring the inside ring and then the inner ring that's how they were able to make the walls wall maria 
Waluigi. <laughs> yes, thank you. I was... You're going to make me quit. <laughs> I'm going to make you quit. Oh my god. I... Oh dear god. So yeah, we now get to the golden hour scene where they're on the train going back. Um, and they realize, like, they start talking about what Hanji's idea is, which is them making a base in Marley and then infiltrating, which seems very minuscule compared to what Aaron actually does. Um, but that's a little bit of a nod to, oh, this is what actually happens. Like, this was the plan to begin with um, in a smaller scale, which was making a small base, infiltrating from the inside rather than blow up the port kill a bunch of people take everybody out like it's a little Mm -hmm. less homicidal and a little bit more reasonable but yeah they're talking positively about the idea and then she goes on about marley and food and all the items that she could get if they infiltrate marley um which once again the comedy relief and the negative what did they say they have to bring with them like antacids (laughs) They're gonna eat so much food. Yeah, she's just like stomach medicine, toothbrush, a taste yeah. of home. <laughs> we better we better bring Tom's with us. The Tom's need to be on the list. A little too chalky oh for my taste. Ah, Tom, you're missing out. Um, it's just uh, Tom's is fantastic. Um... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sponsor, uh, Tom's. They have the, they have the Tom. fruity ones. They have like the fruity tums. Hell yeah! Do they have gummy tums? Cause that'd be I would eat those. Do they I think really? they do have gummy tums. They probably have gummy tums. They have gummy everything. Yeah. I thought the whole reason why it was chalky is because it needed to be. You know, it's twenty twenty one. They need to have a better yeah. option. Chalky I think chalk. you can gum some chalk if I'm. If oh yeah, signed. yeah, you're right. Chewy delights. Yeah, they're oh, expensive, nice. but it works. You want to know how much is this? This is four bucks. What are you talking about? Okay, American there was like or... one year that was like twenty dollars. No, this is American. Thirty-two counts of uh, individually wrapped soft juice for four bucks on Amazon. Dude, that's awesome. I'll have to re, I'll have to re look into this into Listen, the Tums game. Do you like, need something? I can send it to you. Just let me know. Perfect. Put it on the tab. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be six hundred bucks, but I can uh, still send it to you. 600 bucks oh my god i gotta pay for shipping fee but also i mean that's <laughs> the, uh, valid shipping is nuts they'll, yeah. they'll probably be like why is this person just sending t- like chewable thumbs across <laughs> the border can't this person buy it on amazon like what the no, fuck no, it's no, it's gonna be like, this is ecstasy we're, we're taking yeah. it yeah. <laughs> oh god they're gonna put it in that co- what is it oh, not only for like imported fruits and like food they have like I don't know if you've ever seen it's it. Hat, I know yeah. this is off topic. Yeah, but it's like this huge metal machine and it has like a hole at the bottom and they put it in this like metal machine and it circles down. They usually use it for like fruits that people have like packed illegally or meats. Usually a lot of like Peking tuck and stuff like that or like fruits from um, like exotic, like specifically Southern and like Asian countries. And they oh, put when them you in try to bring oranges and, into Mexico. Like, yeah. Yes, and it goes like woo woo woo, and then it goes yeah. into the bottom and it gets shredded. It's so cool. What? I've never job. seen this putting... thing. Yeah. Go smuggle some yeah. into Canada. Yeah. And see I it. will not be smuggling anything into Canada. I'm sorry. I respect I mean, this too much. I will send you a video of it because there yeah, is like border comp- like border patrol. That's what they usually have. Oh, it's so fun. It's so. Fun. Oh, I digress. Um. So. <laughs> 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 um, they were talking about all the things that they would bring um, Armin still being optimistic and that they can change things and everything's going to be great thank you Armin we need this um, and Aaron decides to talk about the fact that like man I wish I had more time I only have less than t- five years left like a little over five years and then they start talking about like who's going to take the Titan it starts off with Mikasa saying that she's going to take it but then Jean instantly says no um, obviously, probably because of the fact that he likes Mikasa, but he says it's because the um, she has a deal with the nation of Hizuru and that mm-hmm. she can't do that. 
Um, and then, but then she says, like, first of all, I'm way smarter than Aaron and less of a suicidal maniac. Um, and then you'll have a gifted leader who has good judgment and who is able to take this task on. Even though I don't want hand-me-downs from Aaron, I will take the founding titan. I will, which apparently, like, none of them talk about the attack titan. They're just talking about the founding. Mm. So, who knows what's happening here? Um, Do we I just th- love it. Jean just being like, I'm super smart. That uh, was another question I had that I didn't really understand. Like, he's now mm-hmm. s- has three titans in him. Does the person- not at that point? Well, no, I know oh, that, but okay. I'm saying in the, in the show, not at that point. Does the person who eats him inherit the three titans, or is it does it just go back to the founding titan? Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, if oh, he that's eats, a good point. Yeah, yeah. If he eats all of the titans that are in the show as of right now, does it all just turn into a mega titan, the founding titan? Ryan, I have a question for you because I don't rem- remember this. How much has the anime talked about the walls? And I'm saying specifically the walls because you will understand this. Spoilers, These bro. two Spoilers. will not understand. Spoilers. There's been two uses, but not anything substantial. They just there's this. Okay, so we're not going to talk about it. TBD, Ruben. Okay, okay. We'll learn that. TBD. Well, I mean, it kind of just classic answered. attack on Titan. Yeah. Just, Thank you. Wait. I'm really... just wait. <laughs> just wait. Just um, wait. I mean, I, I appreciate I... the fact that Ryan understood that. So <laughs> you just answered my question for me, though. You know, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. Um. I don't think it does because once you find out, I'm not going to go into it. Um, okay. Okay. But yeah, so <laughs> he says that he doesn't want to take the hand me downs, but whatever. Um, Connie says, like, well, if someone's really that smart, they probably shouldn't be taking it because they are um, a huge benefit to the um, LDM people. And so he will take it from. <laughs> he offers himself <laughs> um, mm-hmm. because he thinks that Gene should become a regiment leader and that he shouldn't waste his time specifically t- taking a Titan because that reduces it. Like it gives them a set death date. So he doesn't think that's a great thing for Gene. So says that he shouldn't get it. Um, so then <laughs> Sasha shoots <laughs> down that idea very fast and says, it's not a good option because he's an idiot and that an mm-hmm. idiot should not have a Titan. <laughs> <laughs> in that oh god i i just love her explanation she's just like such an important um shouldn't be given to an idiot and then she said i don't i'll doggone inherit it i don't wanna but i'll i and i really don't wanna but i'll take it <laughs> she's just like i really like i really don't want this task i really don't want to do it but i will take it for the team and then Connie then looks at Sasha, oh. and they both have this. <laughs> What's up? No, just the way Connie is like, oh, like you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know yeah. exactly what you mean. And then, yeah, and he's just like, I have this conversation written out because it's so it's too good. Um, he says, "Huh, isn't that weird?" And then Sasha says, "Huh." <laughs> he says like well you know he said an idiot's not fit for the role and then she goes hmm <laughs> he goes we, um you're more of an idiot than i am so you're <laughs> contradicting yourselves and they both just go huh <laughs> back and forth to each other for a good <laughs> for longer than they probably should have but it was a very much like gay <laughs> You can tell that they're joking, but they're also trying to be very serious at the same time. It's fantastic. Um, I highly recommend that part. It's a it's a huge laugh. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I also, yeah. Aaron says that he doesn't want any of them to inherit it because he doesn't want them to take on that burden, and that he wants them all to live long lives. He says this. He's not. F- five feet away from Armin. At this point, Armin has the Colossal Titan. Like, I want mm. all of you to live a long life. Yeah, but, but like, Armin's here. Come <laughs> Armin chose this life, you know? Like, who... He didn't! He didn't he choose did not, it! Yeah. Like, he specific... 
he was unconscious. He was like he had third degree burns and dying, and he was shot up with Titan serum, turned into Titan, and then it was the Titans like usual like want to eat to, in, like consumed spirit hold. I'm just he saying didn't get to choose this. It, it, we didn't he might have not gotten to choose this. Uh but like I feel I don't know. I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I I understand like there's the it's difficult to say there is like there's no going back for him. Like he now has a colossal titan. He's essentially on borrowed time at this point because he should have died. Like the yeah. I'm not saying that he should have died over Arwen. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is he, in any other situation, like if, like in any other case, he should have died. He had third degree burns. He was toasty, like he was roasty toasty, and dying. Roasty and, toasty. Well, <laughs> he was roasty. Man was a kettle chip. And, <laughs> <laughs> he was beyond a kettle chip. He was just like he fell onto like some wood and just like got consumed like he is a oh my god i just felt really bad crispy. He, yeah so roasty toasty he was crispy af and he was brought back to life because of the titan power classic so. all i'm saying is it there was a choice between having armin back and having uh frick what's this guy's the commander oh. uh uh, yeah, Erwin. Erwin back. And we chose Armin because he, he, he's he got that tactical advantage. Like, he sees shit very tactically. So the guy. It, it was either him or Erwin, and we didn't really have a connection with Erwin. So uh, we, it, it's, I mean, it's still Armin's fault. a lot of people fault. had a connection with Erwin. Well, I meant, like, the, the, you know, the main three didn't have a connection. Oh, yes. You mean the plot armor? Yeah. I'm just so kidding. it's I like mean, also at the same time. It's like it's really Armin's fault for being tactical. You know, mm. we're still blaming the shit on Armin. I'm kidding. We're not blaming the shit on Armin. <laughs> I lost what I was gonna say. I lost what I was gonna say. No, it's okay. I definitely cut you off. No, that's went okay. Off about the fact that he didn't choose this, but yeah, it's a. It's definitely essentially his. Is like his fate is sealed. Like he can't stop him from changing. But also, it kind of shows that Aaron doesn't want to give him the founding and the attack titan on top of the colossal titan. Yeah. So, who knows? He's got enough stress to worry about. Um, <laughs> yeah, Armin more. has a lot of stress. Armin's like yeah, wondering, he... should I bring back this bowl cut or what? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Everyone says I rock no, the, the bowl, bowl cut. cut. So wild. <laughs> oh my god, he still has the bowl cut until like modern, like present day. Yeah, because that's when everyone got their hair cut. Because Nika in the flashback has a ponytail, and then she then gets the pixie cut. Unfortunate. She's my manic pixie dream girl. God, she's amazing. We love to see it. Who um, is she? We then. XO XO Gossip Girl, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh God. Then we get to a scene that we're like, we find out that the, the essentially the flashbacks were Mikasa thinking about the past, um, which makes sense because it was essentially Mikasa centric with her finding out about her family. And then just all the flashbacks of like those particular scenes where they were outside and connected. So it kind of made sense why it was her looking out the window. Um, but yeah, she was looking at the wall and she goes up to the room and then they have like essentially a meeting that reflects what happened in episode two, the train. Or it was the Marley and Warriors sitting in a room talking about like what they should do next. Yeah. But this time it is a meeting with the four out of the six people that were on the train, excluding Aaron and Sasha because he's dead. Um, <laughs> rest in peace. Um, but yeah, they have a conversation about the fact that like 
the volunteers were instantly um, detained afterwards because they need to figure out like what Zeke's actual intention is before they let a bunch of Marleyans plus their leader free and being able to actively do stuff, which makes more sense and kind of gives us an explanation why they were detained at gunpoint when they came back to parody. Um, oh God. Yeah. They then talk about the fact that Aaron, it seems a little bit suspicious that Aaron is now just f- all in on Zeke's plan because what we saw in the flashbacks was he was very much like, I'm not okay with this. Like I'm not okay mm-hmm. with about to do and now he's just like yeah Zeke like the love um so it's it gives us a little bit of perspective here um that one seems to be on edge with Aaron and some may trust him a lot less especially Connie and Jane for what happened with Sasha um but Connie make uh, points out that like did that look like Aaron to you guys um, he does not look like Aaron. Um, and it's, it's very upsetting to see him like, question, like essentially say that this is the case, but it also is very true because in the flashbacks, he seemed like happy go lucky Aaron that was all blushy and adorable. And now we have 18 pack Aaron, uh, like <laughs> Aaron in the basement, um, just being mega emo boy now with the man bun. Um, so he definitely has taken some sort of weird time. A Welcome lot of things adulthood, have happened, baby. That's a whole thing. <laughs> oh my god. He turned 19 and then just chose violence. <laughs> <laughs> He's entered his rebellious phase. He found out about Tumblr. It's all downhill from there. Yeah. This is Tumblr Aaron. 100%. Mm-hmm. God. Attack on Tumblr. It's, uh, attack on Tumblr. <laughs> I like that. Dear God, this was like pre six, like twenty sixteen Tumblr too. Like you know, Aaron <laughs> oh, this was some stuff. This is aggressive. Arky he knows monkeys. what the one slur is. Yeah. Well, he <laughs> God, he has going on. Um, but yeah, he thinks it's a little bit odd that he now is siding with his half brother. Um, that he was very much against before mm. all of this happened, and he decided to do a solo mission to Marley, which from what Hanji has been kind of instigating is the fact that this was very much not a plan by parody. This was very much an Aaron decided to do this himself and now he's going to act upon it. Um, But yeah, it definitely put everyone in danger. Um, Yeah. And Connie says that they'll have to like, the only thing that they can do at this point is they're going to have to cut him down if necessary. But Mikasa says quickly, like, no, we're not going to do that. I'm not going to let you do that. And then Connie then says, like, like, <laughs> if, she, um, if she's sitting well with him at this point. Um, but however, my goodness, all the words. Um, yeah, he just seems different. And Connie calls Mikasa out on it. Like, are you going to still stay out by his side? Like, you are seeing what's happening and you're going to continue to support him. Like, this doesn't make any sense um, in that this isn't, like, Aaron doesn't care about us anymore. And if he did care about us, he put, a, like, he put you on the front line. He would usually be the one who would say, like, no, you can't go. You can't do this. But then Aaron made you, um, Armin blow up, a P, like, the port. He put you on the front line and then put all of us into danger. Like, you know that this is not how he would act in the first place. Um, and then everyone mm-hmm. kind of like looks around awkwardly and still trying to have some hope. Mikasa says that maybe that's why he's so hostile to everyone else but them because he cares so much. And then you kind of see like this breakdown and her kind of realizing what she's saying out loud doesn't make any sense because it's her trying to protect the person that she been in love with since she was a kid and now realizing that if this was anyone else this would not be the person that she would support god i feel really bad (laughs) by this scene um because you just see like very much like her breaking down mentally and then realizing that maybe i'm not supporting the right person and that this is not where i should be putting my trust um but yeah God, yeah. Connie cuts in and says that Sasha wouldn't have died if 
Aaron didn't do the eldest. And because when Sasha died, like, what did Aaron do? He didn't cry. He didn't, like, regret it. Like, did he regret his actions? Because all we saw was he was laughing. <laughs> and why was he laughing? That was really scary. <laughs> yeah, <Sorry. okay. laughs> yeah, that's that what was it was. Very scary. I mean, it's true. He was laughing like that. And, like, do you think he was in his right mind oh doing God. that? Um, Is Aaron going to become the Joker? I take that. I take that back. I don't we know why. In the society. Nope. Nope. We're not shitting on. No. We're not doing that. Continue, Fee. Yeah. Okay. I will. Uh, um. Arn says that what he'll do is he's going to go talk to Aaron with Mikasa, um, and it's just going to be them alone, and that um Jean questions that idea, wondering if that's going to like. Is, um, if he's just going to go and specifically like his goals are the same as Zeke. If his goals are the same as Zeke's, then there probably is no hope at this point. Mm. Um, and then Armin looks away and then pretty much solidifies his feelings in this particular moment when he says that when they accomplished the attack on Marley, they were able to get Titan Serum and now they have options. The option of making someone we trust into a Titan and they would inherit Aaron's founding Titan. And we see a clip of Aaron in the um, jail cell and Zeke out in the woods. And that is the end of the episode. You do see an upset Levi when he is watching everyone party and he's just mm. watching Zeke. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. The tension, the drama. Can we talk about the the next episode preview? Oh, okay. So you watched that too? Yeah, I didn't watch it. That's okay. I regret watching that preview. Yeah, me too. I was very upset. Like you could have, like, flashed warning, warning, don't watch this. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't watch. Like, I watched a little bit of it, and then I. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then never mind. We're not gonna get into that. We'll, yeah. We'll wait for our next episode. No. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Any um, final thoughts? It was just a man. Luke, Luke I, warm. Yeah. I'm glad I had hummus during the during the show. I, this was a this episode was so perfectly built for snacking. Yeah. Forgetful. As a person who enjoys no, this was not a snack episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, definitely um, not. Most, no. Um, but no, I think it was interesting to see, and we're finally watching kind of just like the shield that Mikasa has on her end of breakaway, because she's now realizing that like he might not be the person to save at this point, mm-hmm. um, and she's still struggling with it. Like, it's Mikasa; she's been sitting over this guy since episode one um so it's just very much um it we now see like how armin is though which is very much armin saying like being very realistic about it whereas he's always been optimistic he's now very much solidified that like oh that's a good point our meeting doesn't go well that we're going to change like we're going to give the founding to someone um, and someone actually commented, and I didn't even notice this, and I didn't put two and two together. Was like last episode, he was holding a the shell, which was the last time that like we saw in season three was them at the beach, and it was like essentially him trying. To, he was constantly fidgeting with it. Someone specifically does as a theory is like him trying to like juggle the idea, like trying to make like a visual. Of like his friendship with um, Aaron, and trying to like remind himself of it, maybe just having like this is the beach we got to go to the beach, but now we there was some hope last episode for Armin, and now it's very much Armin's now losing his optimism and his hope, which is a little bit upsetting. Um. So yeah, and I'm no go ahead, Fee. Sorry. Oh. No, I was just going to say, I just, it's difficult to watch, like, Connie and Jean now. 
because yeah. you can tell like they're completely gone like off of Aaron's team for sure understandably yeah. so not a good team to be on yeah uh christian should we make a bet right here right now on whether oh. or not annie is coming back i Just... gotta be honest with you chief who the fuck is annie again chris the chicken the chris i remember who annie is Oh, I mean, of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Why would she not come back? Okay. All right. I was just making sure that we were all on the same page. Oh, like, yeah. It's weird that you would show Armin having a conversation with her last episode. So, like, it's got to be of some importance. Like, hey, just a reminder, she's here, you know? So Maybe no, she'll have, like, a yeah. cool ankle tattoo we don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's a real question. Go ahead. Is... Has she stayed stagnant being in the crystal or has she aged? It looks like aged. she aged. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I could have. How did you tell. age in a crystal? Well, I mean, it's kind of like how the lady, the uh, uh, Willie's sister was like moving in the crystal. Like her eyes were definitely mm -hmm. moving, you know? One would assume if you crystallize, but, but she's been in the crystal for years. Yeah, like, she's still alive at this point. She's surviving. Yeah, sure. What is she? Power eating? of the crystal. Yeah. Power of the crystal. The power of the crystal. The crystal meth. Crystal. Power of the crystal. Yeah. Ruben. <laughs> power of the crystal meth, man. Well, that's what she's living off of. Am I wrong? No. The power of the crystal what? meth, man. No. I will say I'm excited for definitely uh, Mika's comp. Oh, well, go ahead. No, no, no. You continue. I'm, I'm excited for that conversation Mika is finally going to have with Aaron. Where she goes like, off. Well, yeah, just like confronting Aaron's like current state of mind. Like having an actual conversation between those two is going to be very interesting. And I'm sure we can deduce things from there. So hopefully we get that next episode. Let's hope. Hopefully. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. No, I was just gonna say that this was definitely a bronze tier episode compared to the rest of the season. It was just information that was needed. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but it was just a lot. Yes, it a was. lot. A lot. Huh? Huh? The like, like <laughs> even like then, if I didn't leave notes, I wouldn't remember. I wouldn't remember of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shall we close out the show? Sure. Okay. Fee, where can people find you? Wow. Well, um, you can find me on Twitter and on Twitch at Zoranix, um, which is right up there. Yeah. Um, and then you can also find me at Point in Progress. It is a podcast that I started up this week with four of my friends um and we talk about nerdy news hot takes and just everything that we're interested in um and we do a bunch of other cool things like accessibility wise and representation wise um all of our stuff is transcribed and cc'd which is kind of great um but yeah it's been something it's been a, something that we've been working on and i'm happy to be able to actually talk about it now because it's been a trial of me not saying it on podcasts and other things um, but yeah, um, you can find us on Twitter and on YouTube currently and on all platforms at Point in Progress. Okay. By the way, the, the teaser for like the um, the Point in Progress like logo or banner that I had been seeing around, I was like, I wonder what that is. And like, I never knew. Epic. Because like when it was finally announced, I was like, oh my God, this makes so much sense now. Yeah. So much yeah. sense. It's no. epic. No. Very happy for It's been for a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and we'll definitely get you guys on at some point oh yeah i'm just waiting to hear also what... i definitely mention anime all the time and they get mad at me because they're like fiona's not <laughs> no. talking about anime and i'm like fiona you're welcome to talk never. about anime here anytime okay. i appreciate Especially that Pixar's i did make a really, really <laughs> i'm sorry i definitely made really bad judgment though guys well, i'm gonna be honest say. i'm gonna mention it here is um <sighs> we were talking about like the fact that like how, like 2020 not being super great and um i mentioned the fact that like well there's an anime called japan sinks 2020 where it's japan having a massive earthquake 
and this was the oh. day before Japan was hit with an earthquake. Um, no, no, that's not when you talk <laughs> about Japan sinks. In her case, yeah. <laughs> it yeah, was the day know. before. She didn't know. The day before. Yeah, I that didn't know. Week, I didn't it? like. Yeah, it was, it was like Friday. Yeah, yeah it was on yeah, yeah. Friday. Yeah. We hope yeah. everybody in Japan. Yeah, that was, was my good timing. Yeah. That's yeah. unfortunate. I'm sorry. Thumbs up. It's okay. I just thought it was good show nice though, and also that at the same time. Mm-hmm. Kinda. Yeah. I haven't watched it. Also, um, and my other last thing I'm gonna say is happy birthday, Ymir. Um, her birthday is tomorrow, February seventeenth. Happy birthday, Ymir. The Jaws Titan. Yeah. Yeah. Never I was gonna. Birthday. Wait, hold on. Really? Because I was saving this for next show, but I looked up the 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 score, <laughs> the Attack on Titan zodiac signs. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. This does not make sense anymore. <laughs> but okay. I'm pretty sure it's <laughs> probably fan made. I assume, right? No, it's ranker fan made. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, um, Christian. Christian. I'll do some more research for next episode then. Please. Do. Yes. Please. Yes. Yeah. Where could people find you, Christian? You can find me at ISO Christian over on Twitter. I do a lot of uh, Twitch clips there. Recently, um, I lost a wheel spin, so I have to do a new TikTok trend. So I will be doing the Uzi trend. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you can also keep up with me over at Large Popcorn Pod, which is my movie pop podcast twitter um we just this week had an a24 podcast uh and next week's show ruben was on which screw it i'll say it was about tron legacy and it was a lovely chat yes it was Checked it. Nice. where could also where could people also Ooh. find you on mondays at 7 p.m eastern oh my god you can find me as the uh new temporary co-host over at the penultimate conquest for yeah. marvel mondays yeah it's gonna be great yeah. nice nice i yeah. like that I like that. Thank you. I like you. <laughs> Sonic. Thank you. I like you, Sonic. <laughs> I don't um, like Sonic. I'm excited for your sequel. So, yes. Uh, me too. Tails is going to be good. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, where can people find you? People can find me at Ryan the Lion 3055 for whatever I'll be up to. And uh, right here tomorrow for Anime Nation. With Fee, where we're talking romance animes because Valentine's oh, Day is two days ago. That's awesome. I can't wait to watch. <laughs> I just finished Your Lie in April and, I, and I'm still crying over it. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that one's a sad one. Okay. I'm glad you were able to uh, makeshift something this quick. You know, I gave you the bad news last week and. Thumbs up. Yeah. yeah I, I, I rolled the punches, Ruben. I rolled the punches. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, you could find me here uh, tomorrow, I guess. Who, who's uh, going to be on that episode, Ryan? It's just me and Fee. Oh, a twofer. Epic. Okay, all right, cool. Um, I guess, what time is that t- tomorrow? 9 p.m. Eastern? Am I right? Uh, six. six. So 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Eastern. Well, that'd be huh? Yeah, 6 p.m. p.m. From 6 p.m. PST. Okay, yes. So that would be, yeah. if I do the math correctly, that would be 9 p.m. Eastern. Yes. Okay, so cool. Um, <laughs> I, <love> I, it. <laughs> I will be uh, streaming finally next week. Oh, tomorrow, sorry. 6 p.m. Eastern while you are, you, the math is being done correctly. Fucking time zone. Yeah, right. Super Mario 3D World. I'm starting it. I haven't played it ever at all i don't like the cats but it's okay this is it's my favorite game on the wii u if that means anything for you there wasn't any games on the wii u so yeah it doesn't mean anything i'm sorry okay we also have a oh i can't can't forget about this we also have oh shit i can't stream this tomorrow because we also have an impromptu an impromptu uh Nintendo Direct tomorrow, so we're doing reactions oh, to that. Yeah, yeah. I was really about to ask you when we were done with this, are we doing that? And if not, I wanted to do that. Yeah, <laughs> we will be doing that tomorrow. So uh, I guess six p.m. Eastern. God damn it, six p.m. Eastern. 
All right, 6 p.m. Eastern, we're talking about uh, uh, Nintendo Direct reactions, and then we're going to do... I'll, I'll stream after that. How about that? Okay. Thank you, everyone, once again, for joining me on this epic, incredible journey. <laughs> Hi, Baby Yoda. Sorry, Grogu. How's it going? All right. Bye, Grogu. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye.